Hi, I'm Rick Rockershausen at GridConnect, and today I'd like to share with you an exciting new product from Procentec called Combrix. Combrix <coughs> came about from two of Procentec's prior products, uh, the famous Profitrace troubleshooting and maintenance tool, and also their unique product Profihub, uh, which is a five-channel, uh, multi-channel repeater. So instead of one new segment with this product, you get five new segments. Segments. The idea behind the Combrix product is that these segments, like in the ProfiHub, are modular, so you can build out a system with as many uh, segments as you need on your backbone. And at the same time, you have this red unit, the head station, uh, on the left. And the head station contains ProfiTrace inside, so you can monitor your installation uh, remotely using a web browser. <clears throat> now there's lots of other exciting uh, features with Combrix. Being modular, there's lots of different types of modules you can add besides repeater modules. And uh, there's lots of great things to find out and discover about how Combrix can help you in your installation. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a closer look. So here on the left we have our head station. You'll see it has some indicator LEDs. It has on the top uh, a Ethernet connection for your network connection to monitor your network over Profitrace or the web browser. On the bottom we see a redundant power su supply for the head station. And uh, then I have snapped in here one repeater module that includes an oscilloscope. So this is called a scope module. You can also just snap in additional modules. Here this backplane unit, I've taken one out. I'm just going to push this one in. Uh, so they just snap in. You can build out your system uh, from the head station out <coughs> up to 10 high-speed modules. So there's also a fiber optic module. There's a Profinet module. There's even an exciting new uh, Profibus DPPA coupler module. So it's a PA module. Uh, as you buy additional modules for your system, uh, they each come with an additional backplane slice, as you see in this uh, unit here. So you get another piece of the backplane. And really all you do is just snap that on. your back plane. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so there we go. So I just did it one-handed. And uh, we have a system here with four modules in it. What I'd like to do next is plug this in, uh, give you a few uh, PowerPoint slides to show you a little bit about how uh, some of the features of Combrix, and then <clears throat> we'll do a little live demo on a web browser to see how the Combrix looks uh, in your web screen. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started on our Combrix presentation. <clears throat> uh, the presentation I'm going to go through is a detailed technical presentation. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I will go through and highlight some of the key slides that I think will give you a quick understanding of how the Combrix platform works. So I'll skip this first screen and jump to this overview slide. From the overview slide here, you can see uh, sort of some of the different applications that you get with <clears throat> Combrix, or that are possible, I should say, with Combrix. Uh, you have this multi-channel uh, repeater platform, which also can be used to give you redundant links between locations. Uh, with the fiber optic modules, of course, you can go longer distances and branch off to different segments, uh, copper segments, later on. Um, it's also possible to use some non-standard uh, Profibus cables, so you could use any cable with two wires uh, and um, make use of it using the what they call the SALT um, repeater. Uh, also the exciting new piece over here is the, the Profibus PA, so the DPPA coupler. And then uh, we have uh, some new products coming in uh, 2013, some IO, uh, some DPDP couplers. And then we also have over here on the Profinet side uh, some Profinet remote IO. So you'll see that uh, depicted here. Let's get into some of the details. Okay, so <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's a multimedia platform. So you can go through all these different types of uh, cables, the wrong cable, a standard Profibus cable. You can use fiber optic, you can use Profibus PA uh, cable, which is Manchester bus powered. And then you also have your Profinet cable based on Ethernet cable. As I mentioned in the um, beginning, that Combrix was uh, created out of an idea that started with the Profi Hub, <coughs> where 
Procentech uh, had been going into installations and finding people building these repeater backbones where they would take m multiple repeaters and link um, them together with uh, short <coughs> uh, cable stubs like this, which actually violates some Provibus cabling rules. You're supposed to have one meter. Uh, there's lots of cables to short cables looped around to create these backbones. And they came up with the idea of Profi hubs. So they have both the Profi hub B5 and the A5 shown here. Uh, the B5 I showed you in a picture. Um, and then that kind of morphed into the Combrix product, which has the Profi trace built in, as I mentioned. So let's talk about the different kinds of ways you can use this as a repeater. There are different types of repeater modules that are uh, available with Combrix. We have the scope repeater modules, which you would need to be able to uh, see the oscilloscope signals on any particular segment that you're adding. Uh, if you remember your Profibus rules, each segment is electrically isolated from the next. So if we wanted to scope that segment, you actually need a scope on each segment. So um, some customers put the scope cards on every segment. Some people put, some customers put them on the uh, critical segments. Um, so that's one possibility. Um, there's also a two-channel repeater card, which actually has a, a segment uh, connection on the top and the bottom. So this is a two-channel card shown here with a scope card in the middle and another two-channel card here. So a total of five segments. Uh, you can mix and match. This is true of, of um, repeater modules and any Profibus uh, Combrix module, <laughs> excuse me, any Combrix module, any mix of those is possible uh, in a Combrix unit. Uh, you can have up to 10 different modules. They don't all have to be repeater here. They're just showing the power of the repeater. So using two channel repeaters, you would get 20 new segments if they were all two channel. Um, actually, I should clarify that. You actually get 19 new ones because the, the segment um, you get 20 total, but if you have one segment, you could add 19 more. So let's put it that way. Okay, uh, these are fully uh, capable Profibus segments. Each one, like if you were to add an individual repeater and do a backbone like we were showing before. So each uh, segment, you can have up to 31 devices at 12 megabits a second. Of course, they will automatically adjust to whatever baud rate your installation is running at. So we found with customers building these backbones that um, they are using segmentation to isolate uh, noisy segments from other segments. So uh, if you have EMC in your network, it can cause problems, uh, and particularly uh, variable speed drives and things like that are, are, are noisy. Or if you have power cables nearby, your Profibus cables, those can also induce EMC. So there's lots of ways EMC can get into the installation. Uh, and cause problems. So with multiple segments, the more segments the better really uh, in, in that you isolate these uh, these problems and it's almost you know the ideal world would be more like a Ethernet uh, switch where every device were on its own segment. In fact some customers are going to that method uh, especially when they have devices that need to be changed uh, frequently or, or without disturbing the rest of the network. So we do find some uh, installations where almost every device is on its own segment and uh, this is uh, a great way to design uh, networks that are that need high reliability and availability. Another possibility with <coughs> uh, Combrix is redundancy. So what this means is you could have uh, a Profibus segment here on the left and then need to continue at another part of the plant with uh, more segments here on the right. And in between, there may be some uh, areas where you are prone to cable cuts or bad things happening to your cables. So you can create these redundant channels in between those two, one segment on the left and two segments on the right. Um, and up to actually 10 redundant channels. Now, most people wouldn't do that two or three, but this is the only product on the market that can do 10. So it's a pretty exciting uh, development there. Uh, if there were some application, there are uh, some applications such as uh, aircraft carriers now that are using Profibus where something like this might be of interest. So <clears throat> here's a, another example of the redundancy thing where you could create a redundant backbone here at the top. We have uh, three redundant cables and these segments here are on each of these Combrix units is marked as a redundant uh, segment 
And then we have our segments with devices dropped off of any of these uh, points on the backbone. So you could drop another Combrix module uh, further down the line and then add more segments. Uh, so you can create this sort of uh, backbone. Okay. Another really cool uh, idea in the Combrix unit was that you can actually use these repeater segments on different networks. <clears throat> so um, if you have multiple MasterCards in your PLC that are running different networks, uh, this is a great way to monitor all those networks from one uh, Ethernet connection. So you have your head station with one connection, and then using the, the web browser, uh, you're able to switch between any of four networks. So what you do is you assign these segments to any of the four networks. So in this example, we have uh, this, this connector, this one, this one, and these all connected to network one. You see these two blue ones on the top are network two, the three yellow on the bottom are assigned to network three, and, and the green ones are assigned to network four. You could snap in another repeater card, uh, set the um, dip switches to make them appear on whatever network you want, and basically the idea is any message that comes in uh, on network four goes out on all the other uh, segments that are network four. So for example, if a message came in here on network one, it would go out here, 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 and here. Likewise, if one came in here on three, it would go out on these two. If it comes in here, it goes out on the other two. So you get the idea that these just repeat through the other uh, segments that are assigned to that network. Pretty cool. Okay, we mentioned the web browser. I'll get into that some later. I'm going to skip over some of these um, uh, ideas about why Combrix is a good installation and just kind of stick to how the thing works a little bit. Okay, so the uh, minimal configuration, if you want, if you don't really want to use Combrix as a repeater, you already, let's say you already have an existing installation, but you do like the idea of being able to permanently monitor your network from anywhere in the world, then you can do uh, a simple monitoring configuration. And that would consist of one head station, and a scope module, or any repeater module really, but if, you're, if you have one segment, we would definitely recommend you use a scope. That way you can get the scope signals for the whole segment and monitor that entire in, uh, installation just with this configuration. Uh, that gives you all the stuff that you may be familiar with in Profitrace. Hopefully you are and you already own a Profitrace, but if not, you should get one. Anyway, uh, you get your bar graph tool, you get your oscilloscope and, your, and the live list and so on. Uh, if you want to mo monitor multiple segments, that's not a problem. Let's say you have an existing installation and it has more than one uh, segment. That's not also not a problem. You can just use these uh, a different repeater card for each segment you want to monitor. Um, and you can add up to 10 modules once again. So we mentioned the uh, scope modules. Those give you the, you do need the scope module, of course, to see the oscilloscope images and the bar graph because that those are the electrical measurements. Uh, you do get the live list no matter where you are monitoring from. So um, you will get the live list and see the devices anywhere on the network or see that they exist. Uh, but the ability to have uh, these scope modules, and again, you can assign them to different modules, but it's uh, different uh, networks. Uh, or all the same network and just be different segments. Uh, in this case, when you're doing just monitoring, and I'll go back to this, uh, really what you can monitor mid-span like it's shown here. So uh, let's say we have a terminating resistor here and here. And so you just go in and out of the, uh, the Combrix uh, like any other device. So you kind of daisy chain through. So it's just monitoring. You can put it anywhere in the daisy chain. If you want to add it to the end, let's say your PLC or master were down here then you could put the Combrix at the other end and turn termination on the Combrix. So it would, it would serve as an active terminator for you as well as giving you this uh, great monitoring connection. Okay. We already talked about multiple networks. Um, the other thing I just, uh, I guess that this screen points out is that your, your multiple networks can be different speeds. So they don't all have to be uh, running at uh, the same uh, baud rate. So it could be 1.5 megabits on one segment, 12 megabits on another, 500k uh, on the next one. So it, it really doesn't matter what speed. Uh, all, all the devices on the same network will run the same speed, but you can snap in cards and, and assign them to different networks. Okay. So here's a few ideas about where Combrix also might be a nice application. So if you have some safety areas where people can't go inside to do measurements, like let's say you're having problems with a robot installation 
And you don't want to walk in there with your profi trace because the safety uh, equipment will go off and, you, and the machines will all stop and it really won't be helpful in measuring the installation. So the nice thing about Combrix is you can be anywhere outside of there, not within, you know, like with profi trace, you have to be 15 feet away with your USB cable. But with uh, Combrix, you could be really anywhere in the world and, uh, and doing that monitoring. Another one is when you have uh, Profibus devices that are hard to reach, such as uh, overhead cranes as depicted here. Another one is where uh, safety might be an issue by having uh, people go down in the ground like in mining applications. Uh, these days after some of the recent mining scares where people were trapped underground for long, period of, long periods of time, uh, we are seeing uh, an increase in wanting to keep as few people as possible from going down. And so by using a product like uh, Combrix, you can monitor what's going on down under the ground with your Profibus uh, equipment uh, from uh, safely above ground. Another application is offshore, so you have some remote uh, drilling equipment, for example, um, that has Profibus on it, then you could, uh, mon again, monitor from anywhere in the world. Uh, logistics is shown here, and the idea behind this one is that a lot of these, uh, you know, warehousing plants and so on are, are really huge, and, and the Profibus devices can be spread out literally quarters of a mile apart or, or long distances between devices. So to walk the whole installation and do measurements can be time-consuming and, and, and costly. Uh, whereas if you have uh, your Combrix strategically located throughout the plant, you can just sit in your office and monitor uh, your miles of uh, conveyor system, for example, uh, without having to get out and, and go find the right spot to connect. Another one is uh, things that have uh, very widespread geographically, um, similar to the logistics one, but even more so, uh, like in Europe they do a lot of traffic control where they can uh, automatically adjust the speed limits as traffic conditions warrant or weather conditions. And uh, so this equipment is all controlled by Profibus and to be able to do that you know, safely from um, your office, uh, you know, in Chicago where uh, you can monitor the whole highway system from one spot would be great. Okay, uh, the other uh, innovative aspect of Combrix is the fact that they are able to respond to problems in the network. So if an event occurs in the network, um, you can actually take action and the action can be in the form of uh, sending emails uh, or text messages or SNMP traps uh, to key personnel or, or uh, monitoring equipment to let you know that you have a problem. The other thing it can do is actually trigger uh, relays or digital outputs uh, to, to do things like turn on power switches or hold switches, backup systems, LED towers, you know, things if, if some dangerous event occurred, you could uh, s um, sound alarms or LED towers so people know there's a problem. Uh, so with Combrix, this is all possible. So that monitoring doesn't require someone looking at a screen the whole time. Combrix can do some of the response for you. We already talked about worldwide monitoring, and we'll look at the web browser again later. Um, a little bit more about the non-standard cable stuff. Basically, uh, the trick here with these uh, repeaters that are called SALT modules is that you have uh, a resistor network in Profibus that gives you a bias voltage. Uh, you can sort of see it on this screen. You see this little dash line that rep represents zero volts, and then you have uh, a one volt biasing. So this uh, resistor network gives you this one volt biasing. Uh, with, uh, you know, you have cable that doesn't have the standard Profibus impedance, um, then it's very difficult to, you know, well, you just can't use it because uh, it won't work right as far as the, the transceivers and everything are, are uh, and the resistor networks work. So with uh, Combrix salt repeaters, you're able to run a little tool where you input the impedance of your cable and it will tell you the values you need to turn on these uh, rotary switches that are on the face of the uh, salt repeater uh, to adjust your resistor network to match Profibus specification. Now at the other end, you could put another salt repeater with the same matching uh, dip switch settings. We also have this product called the Pepper, it's kind of a cute little name to go with the salt and the pepper, okay. Um, and anyway, the idea is this this is an active terminator and you can put the same uh, resistor settings on the, on the other end of the cable. So you have 
uh, a fully terminated cable with terminating resistor at the beginning and at the end that are adjusted to make it work with Profibus. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, you're able to run with uh, a standard termination at one end and the adjusted termination at the other, uh, but most cases we would recommend you use either the pepper or another salt repeater. Uh, this is the, uh, the idle line that I was talking about, the one volt. Um, one of the issues you see with, uh, with EMC is that a lot of times noise will show up on, on this one volt line. And uh, if it crosses zero volts, really, it will cause your network all kinds of problems. Sinks, retries, bus faults, all kinds of things. So um, what the, another unique feature of uh, the Combrick salt repeater is you're able to actually move this bias line up. So instead of being one volt, we could make it two volts. So now this noise down here that was causing a problem is above zero volts. And so now it's not causing us a problem. Um, so th this is a really great feature for noisy environments. You could even use you know, a salt repeater with standard Profibus cable. It doesn't matter. If you have noise, uh, you can use these uh, resistor tricks that uh, you are able to do with uh, this unique product to move your resistor values and your bias line up, your idle voltage so that you uh, no longer have a problem. Okay, we won't get into that much detail. Uh, quickly on the fiber optics, um, you can go up to three kilometers in different kinds of topologies, so you get the idea here. You can make a, a, a long bus structure with three kilometers in between. Um, you can do a, a hub topology. You can do a redundant topology, just like you can with the copper. Um, and uh, this is another hub sort of technology. And then um, you can also, as I said, mix different kinds of modules. So you have your copper segments, your fiber segments, doesn't matter. This is a little bit of detail about how you wire and delay times, which you would use if you ever want to use the fiber modules. Okay, the last but not least thing that I want to talk about is the new uh, PA module. It runs on all uh, baud rates up to 1.5 megabits. It's completely transparent. Um, it gives you this ability to set the uh, PA voltage, also a, a unique feature there. Um, no T set requirement on the cycle time. Uh, you also get um, your oscilloscope uh, and, and the ability to, to uh, provision. There's a COMDTM uh, available with, uh, for free with uh, the Combrix. All right. So this is the basic idea when you use the PA as a coupler. So you, you can, there's two other manufacturers, I believe, of uh, DPPA couplers. Uh, neither one has been updated in many, many years. Uh, and with this product, uh, you can replace it. It's a much smaller platform. Uh, you have your head station. You have um, your, your DP side. So all uh, Pro Profibus PA installations include a DP side. That's where your PLC or master is. And then you, you can drop off to your PA segments off of different, you, you know, one or more um, PA modules. So this is your DPPA coupler. If you've already got uh, PA, oh, let, let's quickly talk about this. It could be a replacement for these third-party couplers. Uh, and here's some of the details about what it can do. So it does all this stuff where third-party couplers may only be able to do one of those things. And uh, you can set your Combrix to do that. Okay, so um, another thing that you can do is monitor your installation. If you already have your DP PA coupler from a third party in your network and you really don't want to pull it out, I couldn't say I'd blame you, you can still monitor the installation. So we had the uh, ability here to monitor uh, Profibus DP. We showed you that earlier, where you just had a head station and one scope module. So we could monitor our PA, uh, I'm sorry, our DP side here with the purple hose. And then on the PA side of the coupler, uh, we just daisy, we just spur line off to our, um, our PA module on our Combrix. You don't connect the uh, power supply to the, uh, to the PA module. The power supply is what supplies power to these devices. So if you don't connect that, you're just in monitoring mode and away you go. You can monitor with your, um, you know, your web browser using Profitrace. <coughs> And that's really all I wanted to cover for now. The next step will be uh, looking at our installation. So I'm going to close this out. Okay. So uh, 
Next, I'll start up in my web browser, and on here I have <coughs> brought up the uh, web page for our Combrix. The Combrix that I showed you at the beginning with uh, the head station, the scope module, and all that stuff, I just connected to our training kit, our Profibus training kit. And uh, so here we're looking at it, and we can see the status of the installation. Uh, I have a head station, I have my scope repeater, I have a salt repeater. This is the non Profibus scope repeater. <laughs> And I also included this uh, digital I.O. module, okay? So those, those are all in there. If I were to remove one of those modules, you would see it removed from the list. So these are all hot swappable. And uh, there I removed the module. You saw it disappear from the list. I will snap it back in and you'll see it reappear. Okay, there it is. It tells me what slot. The head station will always be slot zero and then any of the other modules will, will appear here. So that's the status page. It even gives you, um, you can fill in all these uh, variables here. Um, we have our site and company and IP address of course is settable. Uh, it even has a temperature sensor so you know what the temperature is where the, uh, the Combrix is. Okay, and um, so those of you who are familiar with uh, Profitrace will recognize the next screen. This is called the live list. And here we have um, our device with uh, our network with five devices on it. The, the green boxes are our slave devices. The master is the device and address too. Uh, so as I'm set as I'm set up on this uh, Combrix connected to our training kit, I'm just in monitoring mode. So it's it's similar to how I was showing you with one scope repeater and the head station. I have these other units plugged into my Combrix, but they're not connected to anything. Uh, here's where you would also check if you had multiple networks. You can click between the, the four networks here. Uh, of course, I'm only connected to one. I only have one repeater card in here. And uh, I can see all my devices. Um, if I were to uh, lose a device, I'm going to go reach over and power off one of my devices. You will see uh, in a second that it um, you see a flashing red light. And then in a second, it will turn yellow. One, two, three, there it is. And uh, so what yellow means is this device was there before and now it's not. Oh, I don't think I explained that this is a Profibus address map. So this is Profibus address zero down to Profibus address 126. So any uh, place on the network where there is a device talking, uh, Combrix will sense that and uh, populate the web page here with where the devices are. So, um, so now I can see that the device at address 15 excuse me for that, uh, is a Phoenix uh, device. And uh, I'm going to turn it back on. So you can see how I can monitor the network live. I can also check over here to the, click over here to the statistics. Um, statistics tell me, excuse me, um, that you know, if I were just watching my network on the live list and saw everything green, I wouldn't know that anything had just happened to that Phoenix. Um, but if I click on the statistics, uh, I see now that I have uh, the statistic here is lost. So this means that the device at address 15 was lost one time. If I were to turn that device off a second time, you will see it. the, the counter changes to 2. So now I've lost it a second time. Um, and then if I check on the statistic called sync messages, so if you know your Probibus, you know that when a device goes missing, the master tries to bring it back uh, every cycle with a sync message. And that's what's happening here. The master is constantly asking uh, the Phoenix, are you there, are you there? And the Phoenix is not responding, so it keeps sending these sync messages and they just Profitrace inside Combrix keeps counting them up for us. So this is a way to check the health of your network. You can look at syncs, you can look at lost messages, retries, uh, illegals, um, diagnostic, and so on. Okay. So I just turned my uh, device back on. You notice that the counter stopped counting. The other kind of cool thing, uh, which is also a unique uh, feature, is um, the ability to see which devices are on which segment. So if you know um, with normal Profitrace and you look at a, a live list, uh, you can't tell which segment these are on. Uh, but if you look at uh, 
our channel list, it, it actually shows me. If I had multiple segments, it would show me which, and I had different devices on different segments, it would show me which devices were plugged into this channel. These are both set to our network one. So it'll tell you which network that this channel is uh, assigned to. You see my remaining uh, up to 10, you can have up to 10 high speed things are empty. So I have these, these four and I can get these additional ones here. Um, but this tells me I have these five devices on this network and it's still a live list even, even there. So if I turn off the device one more time, you'll see the little red diagnostic light flash followed by a yellow here in just one second. There it is. Okay, it's back on. Um, I guess a couple other things we'll take a quick look at. Um, you can do message recording works a little different than it does on um, Profitrace. So basically the idea here is you can set up these triggers. So if a device goes lost, for example, I can record here, I have 4,000 messages before and after. These are all saved in the memory of the uh, head station. There is an SD card that you plug into there. You can put whatever size you want. Um, and these uh, messages are saved there and then you can open them up later in Profitrace. So I could take one of these uh, files, for example, uh, and download it to my PC and open up Profitrace, Profitrace and look at the messages that way. <laughs> you don't need a Profitrace license to do that, so even if you don't own Profitrace, you can download the software and look at your messages uh, with Profitrace that way. So this is a, a cool feature where it will just record your messages and you can look at the bits and bytes if you're into that stuff. Um, the network event log is just telling me what's uh, happened uh, with the, the device So I, since it was uh, first plugged in and then with the Combrick system. And then uh, the event configuration is another important um, tab. With this, I mentioned you can send emails when something happens. So for example here, if a station were lost, uh, I could turn send an email uh, once, and uh, that email could be to you know your phone number at att.com, so you could actually make it a text message. And I don't know why this keeps popping up, but it's annoying. Okay, and then uh, you can also save uh, to a log if you want, the same thing. Uh, so you can do that sort of stuff. And you get this for each network as independent. So what you do on one network, you could do differently on another. If you don't want to send a, an email on network two, but you do on network one, of course you're able to do that. Here's the four networks, okay? All right, uh, on to the scope images. I'll click on that real quick. And you can see here, um, here are our devices on the network. Here's my master, and then here are my five uh, slave devices. Um, and you see that these waves are pretty, if you've taken any of our Profibus troubleshooting and maintenance classes, these are pretty nice square waves, and there's really no problem on this bus. What I am gonna do here now is cause a problem. I'm gonna turn off a terminating resistor, and let's see what happens to these scope images. You'll notice, that the scope images are not live running. They are refreshed uh, about once a second or so. You see this little uh, circle thing appear in the top left corner of each image. That means that image is just refreshed. So to send six live running scopes to the screen would be a ton of bandwidth, and this is a much more efficient way to do it for your network. Okay, so I just turned off the uh, terminating resistor, and we can see things looking worse and worse. Um, so now we know we have a problem, and if you know some of our troubleshooting theory, you'd be able to tell personnel which device to go take a look at. In this case, um, you really want to send them to take a look at the somewhere near the master because the master has really the best looking signal of the bunch. Okay. All right. Uh, scope errors. We probably won't see anything here, but uh, if there were a severe enough uh, error uh, caused on the network, then that caused an outage. See, everything is still green. We're still running. If I look at the live list, um, everything is still fine, but I do have these bad reflections. So again, you could look at your live list and think everything's good, but if I come look at these images, I'd say, uh-oh, I got problem brewing. And if any, I can click on any one of these to take a look at it. And you'll notice this, uh, this particular one here, the reflection is very close to zero. So I'm just within a wink of uh, causing 
uh, bit errors on this message. Um, and really any little bit of change here, dust, humidity, something could cause an outage. So, um, and that's, if there, were, if there were an event, like we had a temporary glitch from a bit error, um, you would see that show up here in the oscilloscope errors. Okay, uh, so let me turn my, um, let me turn my resistor back on. And now we see real quickly how that fixed the problem. The images are all clean again. Everything is good. Uh, I can uh, look at the bar graph images, uh, just like Profitrace. So you get the peak to peak uh, amplitude of those signals. So if you look at the scope image, uh, for example, the master, it says is six volts. That's from the top of the one bit to the bottom of the zero. This distance is about six volts. We, we like to see that above two and a half uh, volts. If you start to get below that, then any little reflection will cause a problem. That two and a half volts is drawn here uh, with this red line. And um, yeah, that's most of the stuff. The rest of this is more about configuring your system, setting up your email accounts, uh, and so on. But you, um, you get, I think you get the idea. Uh, happy to help anybody out with any questions about Combrix, so please give us a call. There's plenty of applications and uh, usage stories out there. This is an exciting product, and uh, it's getting more and more uh, accepted around the globe. Thank you for your time.